Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I'll be showing you the best features of Samsung Galaxy M10s. By the way guys, I've already made a tips and tricks video for this M10s where I've shown you many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone is definitely its display. This phone sports a 6.4 inch Infinity V Super AMOLED display with HD plus resolution with 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio. This is currently the cheapest phone in the Indian market to come with a Super AMOLED display. And that's really a big deal. Next, this phone also comes with some pretty decent cameras. On the rear, it is a 13 megapixel camera with f1.9 aperture. And for selfies, it is an 8 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. These are some sample shots. Next best thing about this phone is performance. This phone sports a Exynos 7884B processor with Mali G71 MP2 GPU. That's an 8 core processor with 2 Cortex A73 cores and 6 Cortex A53 cores. These are the benchmark scores. In terms of performance, this is not the best phone in the price segment, but considering the Samsung phone, it is pretty decent. Next, this phone also has fast charging support. This phone already has a bigger 4000mAh battery and also supports fast charging and comes with a 15 watts power adapter inside the box. For a phone under 10,000 rupees and that too from Samsung, that's definitely a big deal. Next, this phone also has face unlock feature. In good lighting conditions, it is decently fast and kinda usable. But in low lighting conditions and in complete darkness, it's more of a hit or a miss and even if it works, it is kinda slow. I'd rather use the fingerprint scanner. Next we have lock screen live wallpaper. On this phone, we can also set a video as a lock screen wallpaper. You can use any video as a lock screen wallpaper and if the video duration is too long, you can also edit it before using it. For better results, use a high resolution video. Next, this phone also comes with a wide angle camera. It is a 5 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture with wide angle lens. These are some sample shots. Next we have live focus mode. This is another fancy name for rear camera portrait mode on Samsung phones. Unlike on other phones, on this phone, you can actually change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture. These are some sample shots. Next we have live focus for selfie. Now this is another fancy name by Samsung for portrait selfie. Using this feature you can take portrait selfies and on this phone, you can also change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture. These are some sample shots. Next we have wide angle selfie. Now the front camera on this phone has a wide angle lens but by default it crops it to give you a regular size selfie. If you want a much wider selfie, you can get it with just a click of a button. These are the sample shots. Next we have AR stickers. Using this feature, you can put different kind of stickers to your face in real time and then take pictures with it. It's a pretty cool feature and the amount of stickers you have depends on the phone you're using. Next we have Samsung Pay Mini, which is a mini version or a stripped down version of Samsung Pay. It is more like a small application that links your Mobivik Paytm free charge accounts along with your bank accounts and helps you make some payments. I wouldn't recommend you using this app, but you can give it a try. Next we have navigation gestures and Samsung likes to call it full screen gestures. Just enable this feature and the navigation bar is replaced with three lines. You can swipe from the right side to go back a step, swipe from the center to go home, swipe from the left side for recent apps. You can swipe and hold at the center for Google Assistant. Personally, I like the implementation of MIUI on Xiaomi phones and Android Q. Next we have split screen mode. To open any application in split screen mode, you need to first open that application, go to the recent apps page, click on the app icon and select open in split screen. Then that application will open in a split screen and you can select the secondary application from your recent apps or you can go to the home screen and select the secondary application from there. You can find this feature on all Android phones and this is how you can use it on this phone. Next we have pop-up view which opens an application in a floating window. Opening an app in pop-up view is similar to split screen mode. Once you open an application in a pop-up view, you can change its transparency, make it a bit transparent. You can minimize it to a floating bubble, just like Facebook chat heads, maximize it or even close it. I would recommend you not to use this feature as it is resource intensive. 
Next, we have Smart Pop-Up View. This feature allows you to open applications in a pop-up view every time you get a notification from that application. First, you need to enable this feature for the desired application. Once again, it's better not to use this feature. Next, we have Night Mode. This is one of my favorite features on this phone. Once you enable it, most of the UI elements change color from light to dark or black. You can just turn it on from the notification toggles or schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time. Using this mode strains your eyes less at night, saves battery and definitely looks pretty cool because of the AMOLED display. Now going on next, we can even hide that notch. Now once you enable this feature, area beside the notch is completely blacked out. Status bar is moved below. Because of the AMOLED display, you won't even see the notch. Now going on next, we have palm swipe to capture. Now before I show you what this feature does, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. For that, simply press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. Now for some reason, if you're not able to do that and want an easy way, you can enable this feature called palm swipe to capture. Once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe the display of your phone with your palm left or right to take a screenshot. Sometimes it doesn't work, but most of the time, it works without any problems. Next, we have Smart Alert. Once you enable this feature, every time you pick up your phone, your phone will vibrate if you have a missed call or a message. Next, we have Easy Mute. Once you enable this feature, you can easily mute incoming calls or alarms by placing your hand on your phone or by turning your phone face down. Next, we have One Handed Mode. Now, once you enable this feature and swipe from the bottom left or right corner of the screen, screen size will shrink your phone will become much more usable with a single hand. Once you're in this mode, you can click the arrow button to switch the screen left side or right side and click in an empty area to go full screen. If you don't like the gesture, you can select the second option and click the home button three times to use the phone in one-handed mode. Next, we have double tap to wake. Once again, even this feature is self-explanatory. You can double tap the screen to wake it up. So once you enable this feature, just lock your phone and double tap the screen. It wakes up the screen and if you're using face unlock, once again, it sees your face and unlocks the phone immediately. Next, we have Digital Wellbeing. Now, this is actually a feature from Google, so it should be on all the Android phones. Now, this feature will record all your activity on your phone, like how long you're using your phone, which apps you're using a lot, and how many times you have opened a particular application. So, this feature gives you all that information, and you can see which apps you open frequently and which apps you're addicted to. You can also restrict app usage by using this feature. Next, we have Wind Down. Now, this feature is built into the digital well-being application, but it has its own unique features. Now, this feature Wind Down will help you sleep quickly at night. You can turn it on manually or schedule it to automatically turn on at a specific time. Once you set it up and it's turned on, it changes the screen to grayscale, that's black and white, and blocks notification. It can also turn on Do Not Disturb mode, so you won't be disturbed with annoying notifications. Next, we have Flash Notifications. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a notification or a call, flashlight blinks to give you a visual indication. It's good when you need it, but it can be quite annoying. Next, we have auto call recording. Now, this feature allows you to record calls automatically on your phone, whether you get a call or make a call. You can enable this feature from the phone dialer settings. Next, we have blue light filter. Now, just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light which is supposed to help you sleep better at night. We can also change the intensity of the filter using the slider. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time. Now going on next, we have the option to change the font on this phone. Usually most Android phones don't give you this option, but on this phone, you can change the font. By default, you get three different fonts, and if you're not happy with them, you can download more from the Samsung store. Next, we have Easy Mode. Now, if this phone is going to be used by some elderly people, then you can enable easy mode for them. Now, once you enable this feature, everything on your phone will be enlarged. All the app icons on the home screen and app draw increase in size. Even the text size gets scaled up to make it more visible for elderly people. Next, we have Game Launcher. Now, once you enable this feature, it will create a folder called Game Launcher on your home screen and you can keep all your games in that folder. Now from this interface, you can change your performance mode. You can set it to balanced, power saver, or even high performance. So once you set up your power profile, every time you open a game, your phone will automatically switch to that power profile. Beside that, we also get the option to mute sound for all games at once. Now that's not all. Once you open any game that's listed in the game launcher, 
you will see extra buttons on the navigation bar. One button at the top to lock the screen and another button at the bottom for extra options. Once you click it, you get additional options for do not disturb mode, blocking calls, taking a screenshot, recording video and lot more crazy stuff like that. Next we have fingerprint gesture to pull down the notification bar. Once you enable this feature, you can do a swipe down gesture on the fingerprint scanner to pull down the notification bar. You can swipe it again to pull down the notification toggles and finally you can swipe it up to send it back. This is a really handy feature. Now going on next, we have swipe to call or send message. Once you enable this feature in the default phone dialer application, you can simply swipe left or right on a contact or a call log to make a call or send a message. It's not a great feature, but a very nice shortcut that's available only on the Samsung phones. Next we have dual messenger, which is like dual apps for Samsung. Using this feature, you can have two Snapchat accounts, two Facebook accounts, or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now, this feature might seem awesome, but it only works with few applications. Like if you want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, you can't do it using this feature. With that said, if you really want to do it, like if you want two Paytm accounts on the same Samsung phone, you can try using secure folder feature. In your default phone dialer, we have a feature called caller ID and spam protection, and it just does what it says. Every time you get a call from any unknown number, it tries to trace it, give you a name and will try to intimate you if it is a spam call. I'll definitely recommend you to use this feature. Now the next best feature on this phone is the secure folder. Now this feature has a simple name called secure folder but offers you a lot of things. Now this is an awesome feature but it is very resource intensive. So if you don't have a high end Samsung phone, I will not recommend you to use this feature. Instead, try third party applications. Now going on next, this phone also has Dolby Atmos sound enhancement. You can enable it by using the toggles or by going to the sound settings. Once you enable it, you have different sound profiles like auto, movies, music and voice. And depending upon the sound profile, you will get different audio experience. Right now, this feature is only available if you're using a headset. Now going on next, this phone even comes with Samsung themes or just the themes. You literally have hundreds of themes to choose from, both free and paid and you can completely change the look and feel of your phone. Starting from wallpapers to UI elements to app icons, it literally changes everything. Now going on next, we have maximum power saving mode. On previous Samsung phones, it was called as ultra power saving mode and once you enable this feature, it will decrease the screen brightness, set speed limiter, restrict background network usage, limit the number of apps that you can use and apply a dark theme. On the whole, it does all these things to improve the standby time of your phone. Now even in this mode, you can still use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data and use some regular applications like YouTube, Facebook and even use the camera application. If you are on a very long journey, just enable this mode and you can have great battery life. Now going on next, we can also increase the touch sensitivity of the display. Now most of the time, if you add a screen guard or a tempered glass to your display, touch sensitivity might go down. In that case, you can use this feature. Now going on next, we have lock screen stories. If you want to see something interesting and useful information every time you see the lock screen, just enable this feature. Once done, every time you try to unlock the phone by going to the lock screen, you will see a different story. Next, this phone also supports Dual Vo LTE along with native video calling. Here's a quick sample. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a dedicated SD card slot. If the internal storage is not sufficient for you, you can always add in an SD card and expand the storage. It's not a big deal, but if you need extra storage, that dedicated SD card slot will come in handy. Now going on next, we can also reduce animations on this phone. Now for some reason, if you want to reduce animations and by reducing the CPU load, then you can do it on this phone by just disabling this toggle. Even if you reduce animations, there are still some animations going on. And for some reason, if you want to completely remove animations, you can do it from the accessibility settings. Personally, I'll stick with animations even at a cost of performance and battery life. Now going on next, we can also disable fast charging. Now this phone, as you might have already known, comes with fast charging, supports fast charging and comes with a fast charger inside the box. But for some reason, maybe for a prank or something else, if you want to disable fast charging, you can do it from the battery settings. Now going on next, this phone also has Widevine L1 support. That means you can stream high definition videos from Netflix and Amazon Prime on this phone. This is kind of a big deal if you watch a lot of video content on your phone. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the tips and tricks section where I'll be talking about many things which I didn't cover in this video.
By the way guys, if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video or if you have any questions, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.